Hello everybody, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. I'm hoping that you're having a wonderful week thus far. I am so excited and thrilled that I could spend some time with you, to connect with you, to just share the love of Jesus. And you know the reason why is because the love of Jesus makes life sweeter by the day. I am so happy that you guys are tuning in each and every week and I appreciate your generosity to this ministry. And for those who contribute financially or with your prayers or words of encouragement, I just want to take this time to say thank you so much for, from the bottom of my heart because Full of Life Ministries has been and will continue to be blessed because of your love for this ministry. And we're, we're so grateful to God for just what he has done this year. And we're in the year of 2021, about to enter into 2022. And I hope that you guys are kind of getting your mind wrapped around the idea that this is going to be a new day, even though we see so much of the same still happening. We're still dealing with the COVID-19 and all the different variants that continues to branch off and create more stress and chaos and frustration. And, and yet we are kind of dealing with the same things, but ultimately... We have to still be grateful and thankful for all that the Lord has done for us. You know, people of God, during the holidays, or better said, the holy days, we need to embrace how blessed we really are. Yes, it's Christmas time and there's, there's that pressure. You know that pressure of coming through for your family to make it special? I understand there's so much pressure that we create within ourselves because we know that the, t the clock is ticking and we have to get presents and we have to hang lights and, and we have to make dinner for the guests that will be coming in. I understand all of this, but we have to be reminded through the word of God that we have to be so we should be so thankful, thankful for what we have, not what we want to have, but what we have through the living word of God and what we have living for the Lord. It's a blessing. It's it's something that sometimes we get caught up with the trivial things. We we get depressed. We deal with the seasonal condition called depression and and obviously there's stats that are out that really shows how many people are depressed not happy not excited not joyful but depressed even suicidal because of this pressure because of the christmas traditions that we're trying to live up to but we have to be reminded through the word of god that God has given us so much for us to be thankful for. I mean, he really has. He has provided all the things that we need pertaining to life and godliness. He has given us so much, so much opportunities to witness his greatness. He is he has really covered us because sometimes we get caught up with the mundane. We get bored we get uh sidetracked easily get sidetracked with just the problems of the day you guys know what i'm talking about those problems those concerns those cares and we pull out our hair a little bit that we do have on our head <laughs> but we get so caught up with so much things or entangled in in the pressures of life that we kind of miss what the season is all about and I wanted to share with you a passage of scripture that comes from Psalms 19. I'm going to read it in its entirety because it's really excellent 
when you hear God speaking to us through his word. And so Psalm 19, Psalms 19, the psalmist gives us a gentle reminder of the greatness of God and how he sets us in a place, in a special place where we can thrive, where we can thrive, where we can, how can I say this? We can experience the joy of the Lord, where we can embrace his love, <laughs> to embrace his peace and his light that can shine on the dark places, <laughs> the dark places that's in our lives. And he, and he understands us. And we have to really recognize and realize his undeniable care for our needs. So here in this passage of scripture, Psalms 19, the psalmist writes, and I'm and I'm reading this from the um, from the message translation. Okay? Psalms 19 from the message translation, and it says, God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight <laughs> lectures each evening. Their words aren't heard. Their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. God makes a huge dome for the sun, a super dome. <laughs> the morning suns, a new husband leaping from his honeymoon bed. The daybreaking sun, an athlete racing to the tape. That's how God's word vaults across the skies from sunrise to sunset, melting ice, scorching deserts, warming hearts to faith. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. Now, here is a key point to the episode topic for today or tonight. It says the signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. The decisions of God are accurate down to the ninth degree. Verse 10 tells us God's word is better than a diamond. Yes, better than a diamond set between emeralds. You'll like it better than strawberries in spring. Better than red ripe strawberries. Now listen, there's more. Verse 11 tells us, God's word warns us of danger and directs us to hidden treasure. Otherwise, how will we find our way? Or know when we play the fool. Clean the slate, God, so we can start the day fresh. Keep me from stupid sins. <laughs> from thinking I can take over your work. Then I can start this day sun-washed scrubbed clean of the grime of sin. These are the words in my mouth. These are what I chew on and pray. 
Accept them when I place them on the morning altar, O oh God. My altar rock, God, priest of my altar. People of God, there's a great wave of blessing that covers the earth. Can you see it? Can you feel it? When we talk about a wave, think about when you go to a baseball game and some section of the arena begins to go up and go down and then the people instantly, immediately sees the signal from that one section that's in the stadium and they begin to stand up and and sit down and then all of a sudden you see this wave of people going around the arena to create a wave. Well, listen, th there's a great wave of blessings that covers the earth. Even when God's creation tends to rebel or God's creation, maybe you tend to rebel or you tend to overlook his grace that he provides. Yeah. God's life maps. So say that with me. Today or tonight's episode is entitled God's Life Maps. God's life map is right. It's designed to keep you and to keep me on course to experiencing joy and not agony. Peace in the middle of all of our storms. It helps us to love our enemies like Jesus commanded us in St. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. It helps us to demonstrate patience when chaos is all around us. Think about it. In this passage of scripture, there was a key poignant mo moment that the writer declares, it says, otherwise, how will we find our way? Think about this, people of God. If we don't understand what God has done for us, what he continues to do for us, how he has showered down his blessings upon us, how he has made ways out of no way for us, how he continues to provide your needs, whether there's famine or whether there's there's plenty. If we don't understand what we have in Christ, the greatest gift that he's given us through Jesus Christ was his son. How can we be appreciative of life if we don't recognize what he has done for us? Otherwise, as we just read, how will we find our way? Or no, when we play the fool. Oh, you know, people of God, a fool in today's viewpoint is one who is considered a senseless fellow <laughs> or a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. Just a, just a silly person. How many of you guys know there's silly people in this world, people who are senseless, people who just are just plain fools? <laughs> no one likes to be called a fool, but some people don't mind being called a fool because they have lost their way. You see, when we go astray is what the word of God defines as a fool. When we go astray. The Bible declares that a fool is one who disregards God's word. And many times we get played, we get tricked by the enemy or duped by his tricks or schemes because we neglected to read God's life map. We have chosen a different path. Unfortunately, we have chosen to go a different way. 
and it caused us to lose our way. And what the Lord is sharing with us today or tonight is, we need to ask the Lord to clean the slate. <laughs> Somebody say, I want God to clean the slate. I want God to forgive me, to wash me of my sins, to make me whole, to give me a new start. You don't have to wait till the end of the year to ask God to clean the slate. He can do that for you right now as you're listening to me speaking on the subject of God's life map. We can start the day fresh when we ask God to clean the slate. The Bible declares in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Once you get cleansed, now your day can start fresh. And think about it, people of God. On the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave us a blueprint type of prayer where we can daily refresh our outlook, renew our mind, and to be fed the nutrients to be clear-headed, empowered by the wisdom of God. Jesus says in St. Matthew, I'm sorry, St. Luke chapter 11, verse 3, he tells us, give us each day our daily bread. Each day, give us, Lord, each day our daily bread. This is how we stay focused on God's roadmap. By, by being fed the nutrients that we need to be able to clearly see and to understand what freshness, wholeness, peace is all about. Receiving God's daily nutrition keeps us from sinning. It helps us to forgive others. It moves us away from idolizing people or things. It keeps us grounded in our faith. It makes us appreciative of the blessing God provides. And it will motivate you to serve God and worship God and honor God with the way you live your life. Ask the Lord, Lord, give me this day. I want daily bread from you. I want you to feed me. I want you to give me purpose. I want you to give me hope. I want you to give me freedom. I want you to give me that daily bread of salvation and eternal life and hope and belief that I can do all things through you because you've given me the ability to overcome all of the darkness that tries to make me desire something else. If you desire God's daily bread, you won't want no more of that junk that's causing you to be weak, that's causing you to become spiritually malnourished, to become depressed, oppressed, bound by sin. Ask God to give you daily bread and he will give you, he will give you exactly what you need and you can stay on course on God's roadmap. Because God's word warns us of danger I want you guys to understand this. God's word warns us of danger and directs us to those hidden treasures that he provides for mankind. You have to understand, people of God, this hidden treasure requires for us to pursue the things of God. Just like a real treasure. If you knew there was a million dollars only a few blocks away, whether it was nighttime, daytime, whether it was snowing and cold, a blizzard, 
whether it was pouring down the rain, if you knew that there was a treasure that was hidden only a few blocks away, you would get your jacket, you would get your umbrella, you would put on layers of clothes, you would do whatever it takes to get to that treasure because you know of the immediate satisfaction that you can get from that treasure. But you have to pursue it. In order to, to receive the hidden treasure that God has for us, we have to pursue the things of God. You see, it's only hidden to us because we are not aware of his greatness. It's hidden to us is because we're not pursuing it like it's valuable. And and this, this is what blows me away, people of God. God's treasure is is not really hidden. It's been out in the open every day that we wake up. When you look around and see God's creation, when you can go and, and, and see the greatness of God through the skies or your loved ones that's next to you or your friend that has been with you every step of the way or just the fact that you have such a great relationship with God that it's not hidden. It's been out in the open. He's always been available to all of us. You have to understand his treasure is his power. His treasure is his protection. His treasure is his provision because he ultimately knows what we need. People of God, his word says his treasure, which is himself, is good for a lifetime. <laughs> Somebody say God is good for a lifetime. <laughs> yes, he, yes, he is. He doesn't have an expiration date. <laughs> Generations continue to receive from his riches in heaven. And the good news is, God's roadmap keeps us from stupid sins. <laughs> Somebody say stupid sins. Have you ever had a sin that you just knew, like, why did I do that? Why did I get drunk? Why did I lay with that person? Why did I lie on my taxes? Why did I speed the, down the road like I wasn't acknowledging the speed uh, limit? Stupid sins. Why would I try to take advantage of the situation? Why do I manipulate? Why do I cheat? Why do I lie? Why do I do these things? They're stupid sins. And the sad part is these stupid sins we continue to practice. But the Lord gives you a way out. He always gives you a way out. I'm going to give you an assignment that I want you to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, where it talks about God has given us a way of escape. He wants you to avoid those stupid sins so you can get back on track and follow God's roadmap. And, and the thing is, the enemy always brings condemnation from your past and your present mistakes that you continue to make. Condemnation, yes. But Romans chapter 8 verse 1 tells us, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Jesus came to initiate a plan for you to never get wrapped up with those stupid sins. And with the help of Christ, he can help you remain free to live in him when you realize who you are in him. Stop trying to imitate others. When you try to imitate others, when you become envious of others, you have lost your way. You're not on God's roadmap. You are on your roadmap, which leads to destruction. So listen, people of God, there's, there's three 
takeaways. I'm sorry, there's four takeaways that I want you guys to really understand about God's life map. Number one, the signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter three, verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding in all your ways. Take notice of him and he himself will make your paths straight. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five through six, the signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. There is a right road for you to walk on in order for you to see those signposts. You have to place your trust in the Lord, not just part of your heart, but all of your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Don't lean to what you think makes you feel good. Don't lean to a false narrative of what's really true. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't try to justify your actions. Stop trying to justify by leaning on something that's not true. It's false. It's weak. And you know when you begin to try to justify your lies, to justify losing, so-called losing. You have to understand the truth. When you live in God's truth, that's what makes you free. Lies doesn't make you free. It makes you lost. And now you wind up on a road that God never intended for you to walk. So number one, the signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. Number two, God's word warns us of danger and directs us to hidden treasure. Otherwise, how will we find our way or know when we've been when we play the fool? Psalms 119 and 10 tells us that God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So you have to understand people of God. God's word is the one that helps you stay away from those dangers. And it ultimately directs you to that hidden treasure, which is God himself. And he will give you the nuggets. He will give you value. He will make sure your life is prosperous because now you have received him into your life. Number three, the revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. <laughs> Romans 8 and 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. He works everything out for our good. So God's revelation is solid. It's sturdy. It's life changing. It never wavers. It doesn't, there's no variation in God. There's nothing that will keep you in darkness when you understand that God wants to reveal. He wants to unveil and show himself to you so your life could become what he created it to be. And lastly, God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> you can count on God in all seasons, in all situations, in all circumstances. You can depend on God because his reputation is solid. It, it will never decay. It will never tarnish. It will never rust. It will always last a lifetime. So people of God, get on God's life map and begin to study it. And you can see that 
Yeah, it may look scary in this portion of your life. It may look like you're never going to get through this mountain. Or you're down in the valley and you think like you can't make it through that valley situation. Well, I'm here to let you know that God's life map will get you to your destination because now you've placed your trust in God and you've given your whole heart to him and you stop leaning on your own ingenuity, your own intelligence, your own ability. Because every time that you acknowledge God, when you acknowledge that you need assistance, this is when God, can get you on the right road to life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time where we have come together and to share your love for us. I pray for every listener who will listen to this episode entitled Your Roadmap or God's Roadmap. Lord God, I pray that they will receive what you have given to them, that they will embrace that Where their life is right now could be so much better, could be so much sweeter if they just surrender to you. So, Lord God, please help us to get back on track. Forgive us of all sin. Help us not for us not to lean to our own understanding and and stop trusting in our own abilities. But we will totally rely on you to help us through difficult times and seasons in our life. I pray for every listener that's under the sound of my voice that whatever they're dealing with, that you will provide every single thing that they need because you are God and beside you there is no other. I pray as we get closer to the end of the year that we will begin to plan how we can rededicate our lives back to you, that we will make a concerted effort to really spend quality time with you in prayer and studying your word and reading Uh, inspirational messages that come from you that will help them and help me, oh God, to stay on that narrow road that leads to life. Thank you for all that you have done. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled God's Life Map. I'm Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Please support us financially. Please support us with your prayers, your words of encouragement. All you have to do, email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can go to any of our platforms, whether it's Spotify, Google, whatever that platform is, and please support us. Whatever that you can provide for us, we would appreciate any gift that you give to us. But ultimately, we want you to connect with us. If there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, please write us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. We are here to serve you, to make a difference in your life. I'm Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. You guys are special. Thank you for all that you have done. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. God bless.